The skies are finally clearing up after a light rain fell most of the afternoon. The weather's approaching 49 degrees, so we've got a brisk West Virginia evening ahead of us. Wrap up tight and settle in, folks. This is 104.3 WVCK, the Basswood Sound. I'm your host, Carrie Hammond. Coming up after a short break, mental health expert Dr. Wick will discuss the recent opioid epidemic that's been affecting... Time to kill before the funeral. Might as well spend it here. This place was always one for decisions. Somewhere for things to fall apart. Welcome back to Basswood, Sam. I came up here every chance I could. One of the all-time great views. Really makes a small town look big. I'm not sure Nick would even want me at his funeral, given how I left things. I remember spending entire summers on the banks fishing with Nick. My hometown. It felt more imposing in my nightmares. Strange to think of basswood without its mine. You'd think the massive cliff face would be a giveaway. These trails were great to walk if you wanted to feel truly alone. Hunting is another tradition I could never get behind. Just don't see the appeal. Some of these species are endangered. She wrote an article about it. Seems to be something here.
lovers scarring a tree to write down their initials. Always seemed twisted to me. I used to love looking at basswood from up here. It helped give me perspective. Until that day. Why can't the real world be as clear and peaceful as my own mind? Even if it does mean nothing stays hidden in here, not even me. I, uh, I've been meaning to ask you something. Don't freak out. Would you be my little girl's godfather? I, I wouldn't trust anyone else with this. And yet I stopped taking his calls. He even called once the day before he died. I'll never know what he wanted to talk to me about. This is Anna. She works freelance. Uh, does a lot of the human interest pieces. What can I say? I'm interested in humans and their pieces. <laughs> What do you like to write? I gotta run to a review with Walt. You two feel free to chit-chat. And Sam, be nice. I had never met someone so interested in others. Even in me. The story is important. You know I think that. It's just... People around here have short tempers and long memories. Be careful. Sam, are you even listening to me? I heard you, Anna. But no, I wasn't listening. Come on, Anna, look at this. <laughs> what is it? Someone skinny dipping? Anna, you really need to see this. I can't even see you. Something's blocking it. Sam, what are you doing? I'm trying to be romantic. What? Wait. Please don't tell me you're proposing. I'm down on one knee, a ring. What else would I be doing? You look like I just ran over your grandma. Okay, the silence is really starting to scare me now. Anna, please say something. Sam, put that away. Come on. I don't want a ring. I don't need a ring. You should know that. We've discussed it before. We weren't happy. She was the one brave enough to face that. Lost in my head again. How much time did I miss? I missed the funeral. Maybe it's for the best. On the bright side, Nick's not alive for me to let him down again. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, Walter, but I don't think I'll stick around. Given up already? Just a quick, depressing jaunt down memory lane and then you're gone? I know you think that the only thing waiting for you down there is hurt. Lots of hurt. And you might be right. But it's been two years. It's time to face the world. Time to adult. The good news, though, at least you don't have to do it alone. Lost the signal. Some things never change. You actually came. It's been a while. You've gotten taller. Can we talk? We're talking right now. It's cold. So... You left. Joan, that's not fair. You left. Look, Joan, I messed up. You said you wouldn't leave. You said... You said... I don't remember exactly, but you pinky swore. I didn't mean to lie. I just screwed up. After Anna broke up with me, I'm... I'm sorry. I wish words meant anything. I wish this didn't make it harder for you to trust me now. You could have at least called something, especially after, you know, after my dad. I don't know what to say to that. You're right. I wasn't in a state where I could reach out to anyone. I'm still not. If Nick hadn't died, I never would have come back. Thanks for being honest. <laughs> You're always at least honest. Listen, I, uh... I wanted to talk to you about what happened to Dad. It doesn't make sense. He wouldn't have just crashed. He drove like a grandma, you know that. It's wrong. I don't buy it. 
I'm just in town for the funeral, Joan. I'm not a PI or a cop. You're the closest thing I can talk to. Will you just look into it, Muley? Please? She wants her father's death to mean something. But where does that lead? What if it leads to the truth? That could change everything. An hour ago, you wanted to run away. Now you want to start another investigation? A few questions won't hurt anyone. Just tonight. To reassure her. And myself. This is a wake. If you poke around, people may end up poking back. Okay, whatever you do, at least leave the kid out of it. It would be cruel to lead her on. Friends don't lie to each other, even if it means disappointing her again. It's your call. Okay, I'll see what I can see and all that. Gumshoe it up. You will? You make some good points. It doesn't fit. I hate when things don't fit. Yeah, me too. I might just be, I don't know, crazy or something, but... You want to know for sure. I get it. Thanks, Muley. I, um... I should go in before my mom misses me. You better get in there, too. Can't hide in your car all night. Who says I'm hiding out here? I do. See you inside. We'll talk to Walt. Whoever said you can judge someone by their car never met Tara. That smile she had when I gave it to her. She could barely get on it back then. One of Nick's favorite matchups. Might be the first game he'll miss. Uh -huh. Ethan keeps a spare key around, but I should use the front. The old bar sign reminds me of when Nick and I were still kids. Yes, the cat food is under the sink. Yes, yes it is, Mother. Trust me. Oh, Samuel is here. I'll call you back. Samuel Higgs, as I live and breathe, has it really been over two years? Regardless, I'm so glad you finally made it. It's good to see you. What kept you? A trip down memory lane. I missed the funeral, but I made it to Nick's wake. You have to bring it in for a hug. It's a basswood back-in-town requirement. So good to see you, even if I wish the circumstances were different. In times like these, we need the comforting touch of others. At least I do. Also, have you spoken to Anna lately? No, why? 
Um, no reason. If you get the chance, we should catch up. We should really catch up. I'll see you inside. Mr. Samuel Higgs, Big Shot investigative reporter. Didn't think you'd ever be back in here. I'd gladly slash your tires. But that means you couldn't leave town. And you are leaving town right after this. Just really embracing those Hicks stereotypes, huh, Joel? Gentlemen. you good old boys another round. Mighty kind of you, Declan. You're not worth it, Higgs. Making friends already, I see. Declan, been a while. Hey, careful. I'd rather not be working tonight. And you always seem to angry up everyone's blood. I'm only here to pay my respects to Nick. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, shame that. You watch yourself. I think it's time I go put up a photo at the memorial board. That's what people do, right? That's where Nick and I sat every time he dragged me out for drinks after work. Ages. Tara? Oh, me? I've had this stomach thing lately, always churning. Uh... And this thing with Nick? His car went up like a Sunday ham. He burned alive, you know. Have you met Hugh? He took over the old pharmacy just after you left. Um, no. The infamous Sam. I've read that article you wrote on the mine. You must have put in a lot of legwork on that. Oh, uh, you read it. What do you think? Of the writing? Fine. Fine. Of the reporting? <laughs> Something that needed to be done. Many medicines are a bitter brew, but you still need to take them. That's nice of you to say. Oh, don't hesitate to drop by the pharmacy sometime. Oh, and Sam, you... But for now, I have a feeling you're not here for us. Oh, oh, right. Gonna be a stranger, Sam. Bess always had a soft spot for Nick. I think she liked his work ethic. I thought it was 4,000. <laughs> That's what crooked promises want you. That amount is damaged. I can't believe this whole thing's still working.
yourself down Nick and I spent so much money on this machine. Kathy, uh... Sam, you actually came. It's been too long, Kathy. <laughs> Has it? Joan was really hurt when you left town. Nick and I were never close after the breakup, and... Jones never had a lot of friends. Yeah. Um. Maybe don't break her heart this time when you leave town. All right? Hard to make promises. I don't do well with those in Joan. I've noticed. But I'll try. Sam, I'm gonna hold you to that. You're a lot like Pac-Man, Sam. I consume everything in my path. You find every last bite. The mind closing wasn't your fault. Your investigation just hurried things up. You'll probably save some lives, you know. Hi, Dad. Hi, Muley. You piece of Language. Is that a wedding ring? I didn't know you were thinking about marriage. Oh, it's just... it feels like the right thing to do. Dad, what's the point of getting married? Well, it's just one of those things people do, Bug. Here, you can play. Someone has to show you grown-ups. Video games are the realm of the young. Have you talked to Anna about this? That's kind of the point. I'll talk to her about it when I show her the ring. If you say so, hey, just remember I'm here, right? If you need anything, Anything but my arcade secrets. Those I'll take to the grave. Sorry we lost touch. Sorry I lost touch. Rest up, big guy. This photo always looked weird. Nick could never keep a straight face. He was more her best friend than a dad. I wonder who took that picture. We drove straight to the sea after work on a Friday. Hell of a weekend. Happier times. Bug was so small back then. Those two were a great team. Samuel, guess I lost the bet. Bet? Yeah, that bet you'd never come back to Basswood. Not after you went careening out of town like a bat out of hell the instant that article broke bad. Okay, I'll bite. Tell me, Dennis, who did you have a standing bet with? Myself. So I guess I also won. What are you even doing here, Dennis? You and Nick become friends or something? Nope. He thought I was a drunk, which I am. And I thought he was a hack, which he was. This coming from the IT guy. Didn't know resetting passwords could give you a journalism degree. It can. But it does give me less patience for people who sling mud my way. Relax. I'm just playing. <laughs> At least tell me how you've been. Really good. I'm thinking of going back to school. Go for another master's. So you don't have a clue what to do with yourself. Anyway, cheers to Nick. 
A man that, unlike us, people actually liked. Speaking of which... Anna used to play it almost every night. She stopped after her father's accident. Anna? Sam! I've missed you. Why'd it take so long for you to darken my doorstep? Well, I'm here now. I'll have to try and come by more often. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? Even if not everyone around here would like it. People around here have short tempers. <laughs> and long memories. But most of them mean well. Sam, the mine was gonna close anyways. Maybe any year or two, five, if the Lord has a sense of humor. It was gonna run dry or have an even bigger disaster. It wasn't your fault. I wanted to help. I was trying to make things better. You always do. Try, at least. When my father lost his legs, nobody knew the mine wasn't following regulations. You were the only one who started asking questions. Whenever people talk about you, he always says, you did the right thing. Yeah, well, your dad's... Joe. He's an oak. Unmoving and annoyingly supportive. It wasn't just him. Nick thought your piece was great. He was actually jealous. He always wanted to write something that shook the pillars of heaven, as he used to put it. You know, Nick and I had moved in together, started to get serious. But I think it's only now I realize how much I cared for him. Yeah, yeah, that's, um... You two it must be so hard. Are you okay? You knew about us, right? He, he, he said he was gonna tell you. Uh, yeah, I, I knew, but knowing and um, <laughs> knowing are different. Yeah, I, I guess they are. But this, th this was all nice. The funeral, the wake, Walter did a good job, but it all just makes me feel heavy. It makes my heart hurt. Like Nick's memory has been laid on top of me and I'm still carrying him. It's hard for me to really just wrap my head around it. 
Nick being gone. Smart. Don't rock the boat when the person in the boat just lost a loved one. It's big. I can't get my head around it either. His stuff is all over my house, but he's just missing. Things without an owner. Most of it I'll probably give to Joan and Kathy, the, the throwaway, I don't even know. Sam, I'm tired, and if I'm gonna drink and cry, I wanna do it alone. I played that stupid, stupid song like I told myself I would. He said, or he used to say, it made him ache. I did it, and I'm going home. We need to catch up, though. Let's meet for coffee tomorrow and talk. Really talk. 9.30? Yeah, maybe. I'll be at the cafe across from the paper, Christina's. It was honestly nice seeing you. Samuel, come, have a round with me. I need a drink or two, or three, and then I'll go. That's the guy who got the mine closed. I can't believe he showed up after what happened. You'd think a kid at a bar would stand out more. I didn't know you read. So, Nick wasn't drunk, and me? I was drunk as a skunk. Ah, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Join us. We were just sharing stories about dear Nicholas. And let me get your next round. Maybe Ethan has a suggestion for a worthy spirit? Ah, oh, spirits? Oh, no, no. Friends drink beer. Yes, I suppose that's fitting. To dear Nicholas. Yeah, he'd been coming in a lot lately. Sat right there. With a bad dad joke or two. With friends, I guess? Maybe Anna. No, oh, by himself with his laptop as his date. He never drank alone. You two were close though, right? Tell me about the man outside the bar. He had a terrible memory. Couldn't remember names, dates, passwords. Kept his notes squirreled around him like a horde. He got married young and had a kid. Then broke up and dated my ex. And they were happy. In love. Anna clearly cared about him a lot. Oh, my boy, you can't compare lives, just like you can't compare pain. They just simply are. The friend of man, the friend of truth, the friend of age, and guide of youth. Few hearts like his with virtue warmed, few hearts with knowledge so informed. If there's another world, he lives in bliss. If there is none, he made the best of this. Burns. That from your eulogy? You know Robert Burns? And no, just something I keep on hand for toasts. Oh, it's a good choice. And sorry about that, Sam. I wasn't trying to bring you down. Everyone liked him. I think even Dennis liked him somewhat. He always had a lot of friends. A few who couldn't make it sent flowers. How's the family taking it? Uh, Joan and Kathy seem shaken. Kathy has a lot to deal with, now more than ever. And who could prepare for losing a parent? Not a soul. Not a single soul. It always seemed so easy for him. Every day he'd show up, smile, no matter what. Of the qualities in a good man, that one deserves to be at the top. Not a quality I possess. This isn't a place for self-pity. This is a place for dour reflection. Yes, and drinking. To Nick. He was my friend. He will be missed, but not forgotten. Hear, hear. Put that down. Kathy, what's your underage child doing drinking? You have no control over her? Ethan can lose his life. I wasn't doing anything. Don't touch me. Joan. Leave me alone. You guys are all so, so stupid! You do not talk to people that way.
I'm... I'm sorry, everyone. She's just so... so... That was quite heavy-handed. I hope the little one doesn't take it to heart. Kathy seemed to care more about being embarrassed than how Joan feels. Hmm. Glass houses, Sam. Glass houses. It can't be easy for either of them. I'd say that went well. Ish. You got to chat with everyone you've been avoiding. Even if the years didn't smooth their animosity as much as I hoped. Just shut up. Coming back to Basswood was your idea. You're the one in the driver's seat, Sam. I can't make you do anything. Deep down, you've been looking for a reason to come back. <sighs> it's gonna be one of those long nights inside your head, huh? Hey, I didn't, I didn't ask for you to be here, to come back. I couldn't let you miss this. You just showed up. You can't see it now, but the guilt would have eaten you alive. You're back out in the world, feeling emotions, fitting in, that's progress. Fuck the world. Pointless talking and more talking and no one says what they mean. Go away. Let me enjoy being miserable. Just try and make sure you don't do anything stupid. No promises. 